So you've probably heard about AI image generation and specifically text to image, which is a process where you take a text prompt and it generates or synthesizes a new image. The problem with that is you have limited control over the output. Thankfully, there's a middle ground between creating images without AI and creating images with AI, and that's using image to image. For quite a long time, it's been a fairly laborious process to use image to image. But the good news is that Invoke AI recently released their new unified canvas. This provides a straightforward and user-friendly way of accessing a lot of the advanced AI tooling, such as in-painting, out-painting, and image to image. So today we're going to see how we can use Invoke AI as a tool for artists to turn a rough sketch into a finished render. So I started out by just asking my daughter what I should draw, and of course she said a red panda. But I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting, so I thought why not do some sort of red panda night. I just quickly drew something from memory, but of course I didn't exactly know what a red panda looked like, so it kind of came out looking more like a red teddy bear, but as you'll see later, the AI will give us lots of different variations to choose from, so it's not a huge deal. So now that we have an image, all we have to do is just drag it into our browser window with the unified canvas selected. You can see that it's selected on the left there in the menu. Then it's just a matter of pressing the invoke button. In this case, I've set the image to image strength fairly low at 0.25. What that means is it will only change the image a small amount. And then as I'm going along, I'm just increasing the image to image strength. That will increase the strength of the AI output. If you find an output you like, you just have to hit the tick icon, which will basically accept that output and copy it back into the canvas. One of the mistakes that people often make is to set the image to image strength too high initially. What that'll do is you, it'll basically just overwrite the image with what's in the prompt. The trick is really to do multiple passes at a lower strength. That gives you a lot more control over the output. The toolbar along the top has two options, Base and Mask. If you paint into the masked area, what that'll do is it'll only regenerate the area that you've masked in. If you select the base layer, however, you can actually paint various colors using the color picker option. In this case, what I've done is I've masked out the background and then I've gone in and actually painted in some just basic colors. And then the last thing to do was really just to update the prompt. So you can see I've added fiery smoke field battlefield to the prompt. Because the center area is masked out, we can now increase the strength a lot higher, in this case to almost 0.9, and it will only generate the background part of the image. This is a really handy way to generate different backgrounds. So as I was generating different parts of the image, I saved a few generations to the gallery. The idea was that I would take the best pieces and essentially just transfer them back into Photoshop and mask in the parts that I like. This is a good way of getting essentially a composite image of all the best generations. As we all know, AI tends to struggle a lot with hands, and in this case the gauntlet was kind of lacking detail. 
So one of the things I've found that works really well is if you can find a reference image. One of the places that I've found that works to do this is Sketchfab because it's got a 3D model viewer which allows you to kind of rotate the model to the right angle. In this case there was a simple uh, model of a gauntlet so I've just rotated it to the angle I want, taken a screen grab and pasted it back in on f into Photoshop. This tends to give the AI enough information to work with so when we run it through again you'll see it will discard most of the image but it will just take the basic shapes but it'll incorporate it with the style of the image that we want. So I find this technique works pretty well. Of course the other alternative is that you can also just hand paint that section. Here's the final image. Overall I think it turned out pretty well and obviously it looks a lot more red pandery than my original sketch. So before we start the next piece I thought I'd just show that you can also use the unified canvas to outpaint your image which is useful if you want to say generate the rest of the image for some reason. This is a useful way of taking any kind of cropped portrait and turning it into a full body portrait. So AI is pretty strong when it comes to front facing portraits but I wanted to create a piece for the next image that was a lot more dynamic something that it uses some foreshortening and a more complex composition. So I felt like this would be a much better stress test of this workflow to see where the strengths and weaknesses of the AI are and how, how it would affect the final image. So once again, when we've got our sketch ready, I've just dropped it into the unified canvas in Invoke AI. The, really the process is similar to the image before, it's really just a matter of running multiple passes at low strength.
Okay, so here we have the final image. Overall, I think it turned out pretty good. Obviously, there were some struggles, particularly with the axe head. The perspective of the axe head was a bit of a challenge and I, I just couldn't get it right. I think with an image like this, it probably really needs a quick paint over at the end to kind of fix up some of the details. But I still think even worst case, it's a huge time saver. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.